how do we navigate things like cultural trends, current world events, and disagreement in church? Honest Conversations is a deeper dive into some of your important questions that we don't always have time to cover in a Sunday morning service. Ready to dive in? Let's join Andrew and Brooke for today's Honest Conversation. We're talking about women and femininity today. Femininity, by the way, mm-hmm. is one of the hardest words for me to say. So Try typing it this is a gonna bunch be a- of times. <laughs> I was messing up every single time. <laughs> this is going to be a fun episode for me. Um, Which moment of vulnerability? Can I share something? Oh, yes. I think that until I started typing it a bunch of times this last week when I was writing my notes, I think I thought that it was femininity with an M. Really? <laughs> and like the spell check thing came up. I'm like, what's wrong? And it was like N. I was like, oh, learn something new every day, folks. <laughs> I've had a couple of those words, like calendar. I used uh, to yeah. spell wrong all the time. Still don't know how to spell February. February. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Women. Um, one of my favorite <laughs> moments of this series so far has been uh, when you said that God didn't have an oh shoot moment. Mm. Uh, you were talking about when, when he created woman and um, you said, you know, this wasn't a, an afterthought. Like, mm-hmm. oh shoot, I, I didn't create Adam totally in my image. I yeah. need something else. Yeah. Um, God had a perfect design all along. So um, let's talk about Eve and her role in, in God's creation and how she came about and kind of give us an overview of, of um, yeah, her place in this story. Yeah. Where do you want me to start? Well, <laughs> there was Adam. Yes. And then God created, he, he said that he saw Adam needed a helper. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I love that you said, it wasn't that God realized he needed Eve. It's that Adam needed to realize he needed mm. Eve. And then you think about, you know, I'm, I can't remember the exact scripture, yeah. but Adam says, finally. Right. Right? So at last. He, at last. Yes. So he, like God knew that he needed to understand that he was missing something mm. crucial. That was... Totally. Sorry. I'm no, just, it's so true. I mean, so uh, good. The Bible is amazing. Like Heather was in kids this Sunday. So uh, shout out to Diego. He got the message up like right away after church. I noticed And so that. we got to sit on the couch and watch it together, which was awesome. But um, we read through some verses at the beginning of every message and everything. And we read, after we were watching it and I read through the verses and Heather and I both just looked at each other and we're like, the Bible is amazing. It's so beautiful. Like that, I just love the whole, like the, the poems of like God saying, let, so God made man in his own image, male and female. It's just that whole like little three line. It's poetry. It's like amazing. And then Mm -hmm. the same thing with Adam. It's like, you get this whole buildup, you've got creation and then man, and then he needs a helper. And then he goes and looks over all the earth and sees all the animals and all this sort of stuff. And so God's like, see, you don't have what you need. And then he makes the woman, which takes out of his, out of his side, which like doesn't, I mean, maybe it means literal rib, but it's almost like, it's like he, it's like he took, he just, the, the idea, he just took from Adam and made this, made woman. And Adam's like, this at last. Like bone, he knew bone of my he, bone, he flesh of my flesh. This. It's like, whoa. <sighs> so Tell good. me God doesn't care about women. Like, what are we, what? Right. Silly. Right. And that's been such a beautiful overview in, in this message of women is just understanding even more the deepening revelation of God's heart for women and, and, and the role that we have to play. Totally. We talked last week about men and masculinity mm-hmm. and their role of ordering um, and, you know, woman being a helper mm-hmm. and how we often um, undermine that word. Yeah. When in reality, it's one of the strongest words God could have used. Yeah. Like the words God, it's God's help. It's not like an assistant, you know, and again, we, we talked about that kind of beat that horse in the message. Yeah. So 
<laughs> yeah. Go back to hear more so about that next, in the message. Are you saying next? Hey, well, I mean, yeah, maybe we'll go to the next one. <laughs> um, we talked about so that. That came off rude. I'm it, sorry. It did. I'm told I come off rude even <laughs> when I'm not trying to. I can handle it. Um, <laughs> woman is described as helper, described mm-hmm. as fit for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we are introduced to sin uh-huh. um, and we are, we see that um, her desire will be contrary to her husband mm-hmm. um, and, and that, yeah, there, well, we'll, we'll start there. Um <laughs> What was the fall for Eve um, specifically? We, you know, we talked about last week with Adam being the passivity. And, uh-huh. um, with Eve, what are we seeing here in the fall? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's pain and childbearing, mm-hmm. and your desire will, will be contrary to or, or against your husband. So obviously, women have babies, <laughs> so men don't. So there's that, and then this whole helper fit for him thing, this whole identity piece of being God's help to creation, specifically to man and to humanity. Uh, Men were put there to work the kingdom of God and now we don't want to (laughs) because we want to be passive. And women were put here to help and multiply. And so the the curse is like, well, I don't want to. Mm. I'm going to jump right into a question. Yeah. Um, because it goes right along with that. Um, I thought it was just interesting. I don't even know if there is an answer to it, but uh, the writer says in Genesis 3.16, which is, Uh I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. Uh Uh, They say, do you believe that Eve knew childbirth before the curse? Do you think she had children before and after the curse? It seems with it saying multiplied that she had prior knowledge of childbirth. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Uh, there's lots of ideas about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, I don't. I don't know. I, I would say I don't. I don't know that it's necessarily implying that, but you know, maybe it is. Maybe. I, she doesn't have to know that there's pain in childbirth for God to know that there would be multiple. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't okay. know. All right. So there's your no. answer. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Ask Eve. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you have? Yeah. So uh, Eve was put on earth to image God by nurturing the life of God for the Mm -hmm. spreading of the kingdom of God. And um, so we're seeing here uh, as what you're saying is kind of this um, view of of child rearing and childbirth as being something I I don't necessarily want, um, but the design was for her to be nurturer. Mm -hmm. How how do women um, really step into this, this assignment, as we're calling it, of, of being a nurturer and a helper and, and seeing our role for, for what God intended it to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Does, okay, so I commented on Sunday that this whole women and femininity thing feels way dicier than talking about men. Is that true? I think, do you think I so felt too? it. Okay, good. I, I've just, it's just interesting. Why do you think it is? Have you thought oh, about I it? I think it's because exactly this. this. I think it's because of the, I think it's because of the, the curse for, I think it's a reflection of that, that like women, the, it's men. So again, men, it's like, all right, you're going to be here to work. And it's like, ah, I don't want to, somebody else can do it. Or like she can do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and women are you put here for these things. And then the curse is like, you're, you're not going to want to do that. And you're going to want to be your husband. So men, you're not going to want to do it. And women, you're going to want, you're going to want to do what men do. Or like you're gonna you're gonna want to be that position or that mm. that role or whatever, and so I don't know. It's it's interesting. I think that the first, I mean, w- a really helpful first step is to acknowledge like that in ourselves. You know, speaking as a woman, it's like acknowledge the times mm-hmm. where I would never say that I want to be my husband or I want to be a man. Except do I? Like Except don't tell me what to except do. Except don't tell me what to do. <laughs> except I wanna be the one, yeah. you know, making I'm this woman, final decision. Um <laughs> and so really I think, you know, um a first step is just like really taking some time to search my heart, oh God, you yeah. know. Um right. try me. Like totally. see if there be any grievous way in me. And and I mean I, I don't know. I mean, would you agree with that? That yeah, I think so absolutely. much of us are blinded to our own 100%. And I think women have to do that and men have to do that. And we have to do that in our specific ways and 
not get all this competitive stuff. It's like, that's sin. And <laughs> so let's yeah. just, it, let's just accept it the way it is. It's like, yeah, women, you've got some stuff you uniquely need to work on and men have some stuff they need to uniquely have to work on. So let's help each other work on those things instead of fighting each other about it. Yeah. And like all that stuff so that we can get back to being really good at what we're good at mm -hmm. and helping each other be better. And so to your, your question was how can men or how can women embrace that or how can women be aware of like the nurturing? What, oh. what, sorry. What was your, um, you were asking. They were, women were put on earth to image yeah, God yeah. by nurturing right. the life of God and for spreading the kingdom of God. Yeah. So I think for, I think both men and women, the first step is I just realize like, oh yeah, like I, I'm real and I exist. I've said it several times, but it needs to be said. Just like I already said it with men, women need to understand too, like I am real. I'm not just a real person. I'm actually a woman. And that actually, God actually designed woman and God actually designed me to be a woman. That is a meaningful part of who I really am. It's not a competitive, it's not something that's competing against who I really am. God says, God made me, God made me for him and he made me a woman. And that means something. Mm. So that's good to know. What does that mean? It means I'm here and I have an assignment and anointing to nurture the life of God on the earth. Mm. I have a, you have a superpower to do that. And so step one is realize that and receive it and be like, okay, great. So now how do I do that? So I don't know that, um, it's, it's more like we have to unlearn how to not do it than sort of learn how to do it almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same thing for, for men is like when you tell men to rise up, something wakes up like, yeah. I'm going to do that. And once you kind of learn it, you realize how natural it is, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But so I think this, I think it's true for women as well, but all that to say, you need to first accept it, accept that that's, it's not, uh, before, again, before it means something sociologically or psychologically, it means something theologically. It, it's, a, it's a metaphysical reality. It is part of what is real in the universe is that woman is a real thing. So it means something real about you because you are a woman. You don't define woman. Being a woman is part of what defines you. Mm -hmm. So it's part of what makes you who you are. It's part of the gifts that God's put in you and the mm -hmm. ability that he has. And so before we start getting into like, wait, are you saying I can't do X, Y, Z job? It's like, no, the point is whatever you do, nurture the life of God there in the people there. Find what God is doing in a man and nurture it. Find what God is doing in another woman and nurture it, multiply it, bring it to life. Find what God is doing in a child, nurture it, bring it to life. Find what God is doing in an environment, in a, in a friend group, in a home, in your workplace, if you work in like have eyes to see, you have unique eyes to see the life of God and you have a unique ability to, to multiply, to grow that and multiply it and have that thing be fruitful and make it more fruitful. And everybody needs women nurturing the things of God for the glory of God. And just like men who are created to order need to order within themselves first, yeah. women need to nurture the life of God in themselves totally. first. Yeah. Does totally. that look, I mean, the same? Are we just talking about our, our personal devotion here? Yeah. I mean, I think like the virtues are for women too, for sure. They're, they're, they're the things that rightly order us. And so... Uh, you know, for, for any woman, it's like, you know, aim for the virtues as well, <laughs> for sure. So be virtuous in yourself. And well, how do I know what the life of God is to nurture in myself and nurture in others? Well, start, you know, the virtues are, are a good, helpful start, you know, find those things. And then that starts to trickle down into any role that you play. Yeah. Does that, does discipleship fall under nurturing? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and I think like, so the, Anyways, I'm jumping ahead, but you can jump my ahead. brain's just spinning. Uh, so discipleship, it's like, well, can't men make disciples? Are you saying men aren't nurturing? Are you saying women can't order things? Mm -hmm. And it's like, the point isn't that only men are allowed to do this and only women are allowed to do that. Sure. <laughs> it's like, let's not make it weird. Let's yeah. just recognize the reality that there's a unique 
calling and ability to do these things. And so, sure, like a man can be nurturing and a woman can order some things and all that sort of thing. But that doesn't make a woman who does some ordering doesn't make her a man. And it doesn't make ordering feminine. It just means she's ordering some stuff, which sure, it's a masculine thing to do, but it, so what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't change the nature of the person or the nature of the thing that the person is doing. Which, which brings me to the question that's really poignant. And, and that's what if these assignments or definitions don't match up with my personality or my preferences or my life stage? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what do you say to women or men, vice versa, but who, who just think, man, I don't think of myself as a naturally nurturing type of person. Mm-hmm. I've never wanted to have kids or, you know, it just doesn't seem like it's something that, that I was created to do. What do you say when there's a rub there? Yeah. So that goes back to the idea that what we're trying to mine out is are, is there a theological truth? Is there a metaphysical reality in masculinity or femininity? Because if there is, that means that's another way of saying, is there a design of God in all of this? If there is, then he's right. And, and life is found in his design. So as with all things that pertain to anything regard, as, as it pertains to anything in which God has set an order, whether I prefer it or not, I am supposed to come under that. And I do that in faith and in love of him and also standing on the hope that in him I will find life, that he is life. And so we talked about this during the sexuality stuff or some of the other, I think mainly that one. It's like, well, if, if there's a truth about all this, then your preferences aren't in charge. They, they submit to God's order. So the question is, how do I live out what God says, and then I'll let him train me through those things. Mm. The question of, I'm not a naturally person, not, I'm not a naturally nurturing person. I've never wanted to have kids. That can become a big blanket statement to say, well, I've never wanted to have kids. Therefore, I'm just not a nurturing person. It's like, well, n- no, you might be somebody who hasn't wanted to have kids that doesn't mean you're, you don't know how to nurture anything or anybody or in any way, like, mm-hmm. let's not take too big of a swipe here <laughs> and directly correlate things that aren't necessarily completely related. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. So, well, I'm not a nurturing person. Okay. What do you mean by that? <laughs> it's like, well, actually God says you're here to nurture. So how do you do that? You probably do it way more than you think you do. And that's the beauty. We, we, part of, the, part of the, what the devil does and what lies sneak in and sin clouds is we think that what God says is so limiting. But what God says is usually way more grand than our own perceptions of yeah. things. To say, I mean, the license that it is to be like, hey, go nurture whatever you find for the glory of God. Go nurture the life of God everywhere you see it. Yeah. Where can you not do that? Right. Where can you not hit a home run? <laughs> right. It's amazing. Well, I think and, we there was a beautiful testimony in our life group um, from a woman who, you know, wasn't sure that she was built, you know, for kids, yeah, totally, you know, like yeah. just never really had that right. innate desire. And it's through serving in A-Kids where somebody else in the church called out, man, you're great with kids. And it was the first time she ever heard that. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes we are our most limiting mm. force, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like we have preconceived notions of who we are. And sometimes, you know, it's not only con- coming under the Lord's design, but it's coming in to the house of the church where mm-hmm. giftings are called out yeah. and we're raised up and we're you know, serving in areas where we may have never chosen to serve. Totally. Um, but that's the, the beauty, right? Absolutely. It's of, amazing. Of doing this together and, yeah. and discovering who God created us to be together. 
Yeah, I think that's amazing. And yeah, it's, we've got we've to guard ourselves and we really have to, I think you're hitting on this, we've got to help guard each other against our own, our own kind of bad ideas or unnecessary ideas or made up ideas or whatever. Yeah. And it's the same thing I was talking about in maybe the first episode about like build the home, but that doesn't apply to me. It's like, well, says who? It's like, well, I'm an empty nester. It's like, what, what does that have to do with this, the word of God not applying to you? You know, we just, well, in my head, I just assumed it meant this and I'm not that. So this doesn't apply to me, obviously. Right. right. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, women are here to nurture and, you know, it's like, well, I've never wanted to have nine kids and homeschool all of them. I'm, I'm, I must not be that much of a woman. Like, well, we didn't say the definition was, <laughs> God didn't say the definition was you wanted to have nine kids and homeschool them all, right, right. <laughs> you know? So careful, you know, we've got to, we've got to be diligent and, and guard ourselves and, you know, s- start, start doing it. F- like go encourage somebody, <laughs> go again, just go find the life of God somewhere and start beating it. Mm one way or another, just go for it. And just like start with yourself, just like men start with yourself, but you have a world that you live in. It might, you might think it's small, but you have a world starting with yourself. You have friends, you have family, you have a home, you have an apartment, you have a place you live, you have people, you know, you have a self that you're trying to love God with. Just start there. You know, men order those things. Women nurture those things. And the power of God is going to flow through you. Mm. One of the questions that we received um, was very practical and is childbearing a command? <laughs> well, uh, it's definitely not for men to do. <laughs> I Good can answer. tell you that much. So in that sense, uh, yes, a woman is commanded to be the one... <laughs> Who bears children for sure? I don't think that was the question. Well, I'm just so there's that. <laughs> it's worth uh, clarifying, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I I I don't so I guess then the the inverse of that would be is it a sin to not have kids? I guess. Which I which no, it's not. Okay. So I would say in that sense, like it's not necessarily a command that every woman has to have children. Yeah. Because some women can't. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a there's I mean, there's a handful of different conversations down that road, depending on if we wanted to go down any of them. Well, or not. there was <laughs> there was a few questions yeah, in yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, the person said, "Is Great. childbearing command? What if you can't? What mm-hmm. if you want to adopt instead? Um, yep. You know, birth control is it a sin? Yeah. What about natural family planning? I mean, there's totally. a lot kind of uh, that can be part of this conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think we need to understand like there is a there is an order to creation and a norm of humanity that we should uh, receive as the norm that like uh people people male and female are created to be fruitful and multiply and get married and have kids. That's kind of like it's kind of like yeah, that that's true. Now does that mean every single man and every, every single man has to get married and have children and every single woman has to get married and have children? Not necessarily, but we should understand that um, most people are, <laughs> you know, and, and most people be, should be aiming for that and pursuing that and heading towards that uh, in their, in their life. And then, you know, sometimes there's like some, pe- some people are, are called to celibacy or some people can't have children naturally for any number of reasons and all of that sort of stuff. But th- those are real situations to walk with God through and they're, um, how do you say it? They're allowed or doesn't make anybody a sinner or something, but it also doesn't change the norm or the outline broadly. Does it make sense what I'm trying yeah. to say? So again, the whole, both things can be true is that you can not have, you, you can be unable to have kids and still be absolutely a woman and a good woman. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can not have kids, just choose not to have kids. But all of the, anytime we have a decision in these matters, we have to submit them to God first and be careful that we're not just taking control of our own lives because of what we want or don't want. Mm. And so that's true generally in our entire lives. But since we're talking about this, when it comes to like, <laughs> the, 
the norm is for married couples to have, assuming they can have kids, a fertile, a fertile married couple, the norm is that God has laid out is that you have kids. If you're not going to have kids or whenever you're done having kids or whatever, it's like, these should be things that we pray about, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, cause the, one of these things, I mean, Heather and I have talked about this and we're talking about this with friends and all this stuff. It's like, well, do you just keep having kids? Cause children are a blessing. <laughs> Right. From the Lord, so we just, just keep yeah, you, doing it. Like you just don't stop. <laughs> Clearly, God loves kids; they're a blessing. Yeah. So does that mean I have to just keep going? Yeah. And I think it's like, well, n- no, but it also doesn't mean that you get to m- just make the decision on your own. All things healthy and normal that you just get to choose to be done because you want to be done. You should pray about that first. Yeah. And it should be done. Uh, ch- we, we have to look at children with the right perspective, with God's perspective that, yeah, children are a blessing. Yeah. And if God gives you more, he's blessing you. It sounds terrible sometimes yes. <laughs> and overwhelming. And I don't know if I'm going to pay for it or manage it or where they're going to sleep because we need another house or a van or all these sort of things. So like, I, I'm not prescribed that what I'm prescribing is a life of abiding in the word of the Lord and the leadership of the Holy Spirit with the right worldview. So we have to understand that we're living in a world that's telling us the children are a burden. And so we can subconsciously start from the assumption that like, man, kids are going to be a burden. I just don't know if I'm ready for that burden yet. I don't don't want that burden. So we're not going to do it. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, no, children are a blessing from God. And it's, it's the... It's, it's the design of God to have kids. That's what happens when people get married and start having sex is kids come and that's great. And that's a gift. And every, like, you're going to love your children and God's going to love your children and let the little children come to me. And you can't just always keep having another baby, <laughs> you know, like right. for lots of reasons. And so it's like, so let's pray about these things yeah. and let's ask God about these things and put your fears to the Lord, put your concerns to the Lord, put your desires to the Lord. And and then trust him with what he says. And if, if and when he's, you feel the lead of the Lord that, yeah, it's time to be done. Yeah. Then say, you know, okay, receive it in faith and live your life that way. And, yeah. and if God says have another one, you're like, uh, what? Receive it in faith and live your life before God. Yeah. Yeah. If there is no answer to, to some of these questions, we want black and mm-hmm. white, right? Like yeah. is birth control sin? Well, have you talked to God about it? You know, <laughs> yeah. what, what is he saying to right. you? What's uh, a sin is taking blanket control of my life without letting God have input on it. Right. Or what's a sin would be to just view the world from an inappropriate, ungodly perspective that, you know, so it's not the most precise question to say is, is birth control blanketly a sin? And of course, there's been debates about that through the church for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but so without getting into any, even any of that, it's like, well, the real... Um, important word in that sentence is control. Mm. Mm. That's good. One of my favorite leaders uh, through YWAM were a couple who um, just decided, well, well, felt called to let God have total say over Mm -hmm. how many kids they had, you know, no, no birth control, yeah. nothing. And right. I remember as a young woman, just like <laughs> terrified. Totally. Like, uh, like yeah. it's the Lord, you know, and I, they had three kids. Like it right. was totally fine. Like it was, <laughs> they had three kids. And, but you know, it's that kind of like what we view as is radical faith mm-hmm. where, you know, maybe we need to be inspired a little bit more into that area of like, how much are we allowing God to have a say in yeah. our, our lives and our families? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if we believe he cares as much as he does, mm-hmm. you know, like, he yeah. probably won't give us 12 kids, you know, if we don't, if we can't <laughs> handle and it. And if he does, then he does. Yeah. But, you know, this is totally one of those things where no matter what we say or how many, however many caveats I put in, people are going to potentially walk away from this conversation thinking I said one thing or yeah. meant something or yeah. whatever. But again, the point, the point is that first let's think the way God thinks and and how he tells us to think. And then let's start living according to the way he tells us to live, which across the board 
means doing things the way we wouldn't naturally want to do them, giving up control of things we'd rather have control of. And that is what it is, man. Like we're following God for real. We're trying to like full on surrender. And to all these conversations, like we just recognize it it is what it is. Like men want to be passive and not have more responsibility of kids. Women want to be able to not give up their independence and have to deal with the burden of having kids. But it's like, ah, God says this stuff's a get the, God said these kids are a blessing yeah. and like the home is actually a big deal and all these sort of things. And that's challenging. Yeah. And it's challenging to me. And I, so I'm on board. I'm with everybody in all of this. I'm just saying, let's just say it like it is like, let's get oriented around the truth of God and be willing to surrender control of yeah. things. And, and yeah, let's be inspired by people who do different things. And also we don't need to prescribe specific actions that the Bible doesn't necessarily specifically prescribe, mm-hmm. you know, cause well, okay. That person wasn't, those people weren't having no birth control is natural family planning birth control or condoms or birth control pill or uh, vasectomies and all these sort of things. It's like, okay, wow. Yeah. What, I'm not trying to prescribe all of those things, but I do think it's a perfectly reasonable thing to say. Cause we would say it in any other realm. If we're going to insert our desires and opinions and influence over the natural flow of God's creation, we should talk to him about that first. On one end, that's what we do as people. We subdue the earth. We make decisions. <laughs> we respond to God. We do things we, that change things, that create things, that move. Like, that's what we do. But we're not here to do it on our own, according to our own, lean on our own understanding. We're supposed to acknowledge him in all of our ways, and he'll make our path straight. Yes. Yes. And that, and that's so key is like the freedom that we have yeah. to live a life surrendered to the spirit yeah. is a life that we don't have to be worried about every single decision, mm-hmm. you know, be, because if it is, if we come under him, yeah. he will make our path straight. Yeah. And we have to, we have to let the truth permeate our entire worldview that like there is a way for things to go. Yeah. We're not... God's not just this distant God who spun the world and said, go for it, figure it out. I hope you do a good job. And these aren't, again, these unique times that nobody's ever dealt with all of these things before. It's like, I let's search God <laughs> and see where he orders things. And it's like, yeah, this is like, this is the way things go. Yeah. And the, the whole idea that it's like, Mar- marriage is not something that we just get to define based on what we want and neither is our family. It's, it's not built on, it's not supposed to be built on just, well, my opinions and desires were this. And so this is what I did. Mm-hmm. I do whatever job I want to do. I do whatever I want to do with my money that I want to do. I live wherever I want to live. I have as many kids as I do or don't want to have. I treat my wife the way I want to treat her or not. I marry whoever I want and I have sex with whoever I want, however I want to do it. And I eat whatever I want, however I want to do it. And I spend my time the way I want to do it, however I want to do it, because that's what I'm here to do is do what I want to do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's all in the same boat. Like maybe God's real and we can walk with him. Mm. And he actually is the creator who designed stuff. And maybe life really is found in him. And we actually can live submitted to him and maybe the way he designed stuff is actually the best way to do it. And we can start from a place of trust there, even with all of our fears and concerns and small minds and <laughs> small perspectives and yeah. all the things. Isn't that what we're talking? Isn't that what we're here to do? Like, yeah. isn't that everything? But now we're just going to put marriage or sexuality or having kids, everything but that. God speaks to everything but that Mm -hmm. because that's just me and my unique time and culture and self. I want to take a a turn and talk about uh, the feminist movement really quickly Mm. before we end. Um, What would you say to somebody who said, you know, 
a woman. I've, I've always been considered myself a feminist. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even after becoming a Christian, like I still would would consider myself that. Um, what would you say it, it, to the person who's asking? Is that cool? Yeah, totally. This is an we have to define terms first. I took a course in college. I think it was just called feminism because I was like, I've heard about that. One of my sisters talked a lot about it and I was like, sure. I needed an elective. It was kind of in the philosophy school. I was a business major, but I like taking philosophy classes when I could. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take this class. Help me have conversations with my sister or she was, she's thinking like, I don't know anything about any of this. And I'm like, but I know it's kind of a touchy subject or something. I don't know, whatever. I'm going to do it. So we get into this class and the first day, I think I, I asked it. I think I asked like, what's a, what is a feminist? <laughs> you know, like we're just sitting around this table. It was like a round table, little like 12 person class. I'm like, they're like, why are you taking this class? And I said, basically what I just said, I'm like, what, what, what are we talking about here? And they're like, well, a feminist is somebody who believes that women have equal rights as men. And I was like, oh, oh, what are, what are we, what are people arguing about? <laughs> like who's not a feminist? <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like, so my only point is, what do we mean when we say the word? And so that's why in the the message this last Sunday, I tried to define what I was talking about by saying modern feminism teaches these things. So again, it's such a broad, imprecise word that if somebody said, is it okay that I'm a feminist? My first question would be like, well, it depends what you mean. Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Not because feminism is uniquely wrong, but anytime you're going to label yourself, what does that label mean? You know, like, right. I'm a Christian. It's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> right. Like, you know, so I'm a feminist. It's like, okay, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I think women are awesome. Like, oh. Me great. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that that's what you mean by that. But yeah. the, the, anyways. Well, I, I think a lot of Christians specifically, in fact, I think uh, the secular world knows this even more than Christians, but that the feminism roots are in were with Christian women in reading the Bible and um, and preaching mm-hmm. um, when women were not allowed to preach. Uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, uh, from a woman is Julian of Norwich in the 15th century. She says, just because I am a woman, must I therefore believe that I must not tell you about the goodness of God? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what happened was through the years, the secular world kind of hijacked mm-hmm. that term. Mm-hmm. And that is what has become the modern day feminist mm-hmm. movement, yeah. which has turned from, um, I also want to read the Bible right, and, and preach good news um, to, I want to be everything that a man is. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the, the differentiator is that does by... M- m- me raising myself and my gender up, am I having to push another gender or um, people group down? Mm-hmm. And that goes with more than just gender, right? It's like, totally. it, it's, and I think that that is kind of what we have to be really aware of is like, is our pursuit of equality um, or, you know, advance at the cost of somebody else? Um, taking away from them, diminishing their role, criticizing them. Um, and so do you think that that's a fair kind of um, like place to land is like we need to all be building each other up and walking in, mm-hmm. in the ways that God designed and assigned us? Yeah, I think that this hits on what we've, some of the things we've talked about it, that like um, this is what, uh, okay. So this is why, I think in the message I said, toxic masculinity is nothing but the seven vices and f- modern feminism is nothing but the curse. It's way more helpful to talk about the seven deadly sins than it is to talk about toxic masculinity. It's way more helpful to just talk about sin than it is to talk about, are we feminists or not? Mm-hmm. Cause that's really all your questions is like, well, how do I be a, a biblical feminist? It's like, let's just be like, let's just be Christians that, don't sin and do what the Bible says and we're okay with it. And if somebody wants to call that a biblical feminist and baptize the word and all that sort of stuff, it's like, okay, I mean, I'm not going to tell you you can't do that, but it sounds like a lot of work 
to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's why it's like, let's talk. I don't, I don't care to talk about like the toxic masculinity question somebody asked. I'm not here to tell you you can't say toxic masculinity. I'm not here to say you can't call yourself a feminist. I'm just here to say, uh, stop sinning. <laughs> yeah. So that's really what I'm after yeah. is I want you and me to stop sinning and live in the righteousness of God yeah. for the glory of God. So that's my end game. And I think it's more helpful to talk about sin and righteousness than it is some of these loaded multidimensional words that are constantly changing and shifting. And it's just totally has all the hallmarks of the work of the devil. Mm. It's confusing. It's manipulating. It's self-serving. And most importantly, it aims to undermine the design of God. Yeah. The whole spirit behind toxic masculinity is aimed at shutting men up. The whole spirit behind modern feminism is aimed at encouraging women to be men. Yeah. So. It's a hard issue. Yeah. It's like whatever. Okay, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you can use the words or not, I would, but. It's, I'm the technique the of what is of it. it called? Like the five questions where it's like. You, you have to break down, I think is so helpful. Maybe in this specifically, it's like, yeah, this is what I believe. Okay. Why? Well, because of this. Okay. But why? <laughs> but because of the, well, why? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get down to like, oh, this is, you know, this is where this is rooted and mm -hmm. all. And, and I was just touting it as this the whole time, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I think, I think it, yeah, it's like this work that we need to continually do mm -hmm. nurturing the life of God within totally. ourselves right. to really understand, um, how we're operating and why we're operating that way. And, and really letting God reveal his heart for us, mm -hmm. um, because it's special. And that's, mm -hmm. I think you did such a great job. <laughs> Of, of helping us understand how special women are to the heart totally. of God. So. Totally. I mean, all you have to do is know a woman yeah. to know how important and unique and powerful a woman is. It's like, again, it's the whole, like, since when does being a helper a weak thing? The whole idea. You just, this idea that, like, nurturing women are weak and abdicating their calling and kowtowing to men and not standing up for themselves and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, goodness gracious. Like, I, I don't... It's Genesis 2. Like, no matter what situation you're in, a woman shows up and it's like, the help of God. It's just, this at last. <laughs> you know, like, Good. Is it last? <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah. you just women just make stuff better. They just do. And men at their like women at their best make stuff better. And men at their best make stuff make sense. They just do. Mm. And it's the whole Proverbs 9 thing, like lady wisdom and lady folly. Like the vices and the virtues are personified as women because of the power of women. Mm. At their worst, women are real nasty. And at their best, they're the most beautiful thing in the world. Mm. Well, I hope that this has been, as we talked about in the first episode, a, a, a healing of sorts for some women listening and, um, and really just maybe a, a better understanding for men into um, who God created mm. women to be. And um, oh, yes. I have to say something. Please. Because I couldn't fit it in on Sunday. There's a book. Oh, that the whole church has to read. Okay. <laughs> it's called The Privilege of Being a Woman huh. by Alice Von Hildebrand, I think is her name. It's like 108 pages that are, they're small pages even. The Privilege of Being a Woman. Holy smokes. It's super Catholic, which is probably part of what makes it so awesome. Oh, here's something we could talk about that I didn't get to talk about. Okay. Well, I don't know. If we're, whatever. We're already 45 <laughs> minutes into this thing. We might as well talk about minutes. it. Okay. Why, uh, whatever. R the book is awesome. It's really Catholic, which is part of what makes it so awesome. Because a thought on that is like, I, ha I had a friend say, uh, make the comment that the Protestants lost their ideal when we threw out Mary. And we, like, we've, we've, we've like thrown out 
what is who who has been the ideal of woman and femininity when we kind of were like Mary's not divine, which I'm for, I'm with that, but there's a lot <laughs> we got through. We threw Mary out with the bathwater. Yes, and we felt like we had to lower her to LA. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like now, like who, yeah. who, what she she is she is the embodiment of the like of femininity and we won't need to talk about it because anyways, everybody should read the book. Every man should read the book. Every woman should read the book. Every son and every daughter should read the book. It is beautiful. Wow. So, you know, you may be reading it and say, ah, I feel like she kind of crossed the line a little bit on how big of a deal Mary is, but follow her up to that line. Okay. <laughs> Cause I think that, uh, I think that we, if they go a hundred percent on Mary, we need to go about 99%. <laughs> 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 Instead of like two, <laughs> we're like, oh yeah, Mary, mother of God, she's cool. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> was like, actually, maybe, maybe it matters that, anyways. Sounds really good. It's so good. It took okay. me like two and a half, three hours to read. Okay. So it's really easy, but it's beautiful. Good. It's powerful. Anything else? <laughs> that it's you... definitely time for me to stop talking. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everyone. A uh, lot more to talk about, so. <laughs> <laughs> we will be back with you next week. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, Andrew. That's all for today's Honest Conversation. We'll see you back here next Wednesday. <laughs>